Have you ever been swimming and been like, do you know what's great about the water? <laughs> yeah, there's no spiders. Well, unfortunately, today we are going to uh, destroy that belief of yours and go over a few aquatic and marine spiders. If you're watching this on TikTok, it's going to be in three parts, so welcome to part one. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to smash them all together. For those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Nancy. I am an entomologist, which means that I study insects, and I conduct my own personalized tours of Ecuador, where I now live, focused on insects. I've been slowly going through this book, Spiders of the World and Natural History. I'm not sponsored. This was recommended to me by an arachnologist, a friend who actually studies specifically spiders, so I could learn more about them. And this first spider, the diving bell spider, I did actually know a little bit about. I had come across it in my research, but I learned a lot more thanks to this book. Okay, so here's the diving bell spider. The diving bell spider is so cool because she literally lives underwater her entire life. So what she does is she builds this web underwater attached to some plants or basically whatever she can find. And then she builds like a little dome of bubble inside that web and that's how she breathes she doesn't have gills she can't breathe like she can't she's not a fish she can't breathe underwater so what she does is she goes up to the surface and she has these really long hairs on her on her legs and those hairs trap air bubbles and she will bring the air bubble down and add it to her web during the summer where it's hot she will lose oxygen in these bubbles faster, so she has to replenish these bubbles every couple hours. However, in the winter, because it's cold and oxygen doesn't escape as much and she doesn't need as much oxygen because she's hibernating, she can spend all winter in her bubble underwater. Male diving bell spiders are a bit more active. They're looking for female, so they get this little bubble and they like attach it to themselves and they swim around and try and find a female to mate with. Both of these spiders are incredibly important predators of mosquito larvae and small crustaceans. And more importantly, these spiders tend to live in low oxygen environments, places where fish normally couldn't live. And so these spiders are actually really important predators on mosquitoes. So even if you don't like the thought of an underwater spider, you should at least be thankful that they are eating mosquitoes, especially in an area where fish may not be able to live. We are going to the ocean and are talking about the intertidal zone in areas such as Asia, like in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and also in the Galapagos Islands, which hits a little close to home. Okay, so here is the intertidal spider. It is actually named after Bob Marley. Its name is literally Deces Bob Marley E, and it's because of the song High Tide, Low Tide, and it lives in the intertidal zone. These spiders have relatively long fangs for spiders, and we think that they have these really long fangs to help them grab prey that's potentially dangerous, like crabs that can, you know, fight back. At maximum, these spiders are exposed to air about uh, five times a year when the tide gets really, really low, at its lowest point, essentially. And we think that they're spinning silk in these little coral crevices to trap air. And that's how they're living down here. <laughs> but I want to read a quote from this book specifically because this is insane. Ready? At least in the lab, Dess's Bar Marley hunts at the water air interface. It lurks upside down in the water with its special prey sensing hairs in the water's meniscus, sensing vibrations made by insects on the surface. So basically it's just like hanging upside down and when it feels a little a little something, a little snack, it goes up to the surface and grabs it. Many species of desis occur in the intertidal zones of the shorelines. One was even reported by puzzled British marine scientists at a depth of 33 feet or 10 meters in the Red Sea. Uh, yeah, there you go. You can have a spider that can live up to 33 feet or 10 meters underwater. Hope I didn't ruin anything for you. This spider is slightly different than the other couple spiders that we've been talking about in the past two parts because this one doesn't live, directly live underwater. However, 8 million years ago, it did cross the ocean on kelp beds, so I still feel like it counts. Today's spider is the intertidal ghost spider, which is a fantastic name. These spiders live in South Africa, they live in Chile, and they live in Australia. 
There are only 12 species in this genus of spider, which is not a whole lot, to be honest. However, most of the spiders in this genus construct their little retreats, their little houses in the intertidal zone in rock crevices. So they are still living near, very close to the ocean, and they can withstand being completely submerged. So basically, when the tide gets high, they run into their little retreat, and they just wait for the flood. And then when the tide goes back down, they come out on the little rock crevices and they run around and eat small crustaceans and stuff. Their ability to be completely submerged and flooded in salt water, we think evolved about 8 million years ago. The lineage started in Patagonia and then they dispersed to South Africa. We think that the species that colonized in Chile and in Australia diversified from the South African species because the South African species make their home not in rock crevices, but instead in kelp beds at the base of the seaweed. Because the seaweed floats around in the ocean on these big mats, essentially, and these spiders could hang out in these seaweed beds, we think that's how these spiders made it from South Africa to Australia and to Chile. Based on their genetics, it looks like they colonized South Africa and then Australia and then New Zealand and then made the truck all the way to Chile.